little different starting January 18th. The city is entering phase two of a parking program to revitalize downtown business. The major changes say goodbye to one, two and four hour street parking. The new normal will be a uniform three hour spot. You'll also see more 15 minute parking zones along Meridian for delivery vehicles and people who need to make quick stops. This final phase will also retire the residential parking pass program. New details this morning. Heavy snowfall in Japan is causing another complication as thousands of troops, firefighters and police search the rubble for survivors. Officials are warning about the dangers of landslides around the earthquake's epicenter. More than 160 people are confirmed dead and over 300 are still missing after powerful earthquakes shook the western coast of Japan just over a week ago now. Japanese meteorologists warned strong quakes could persist for another month or so. Now, looking back on weather, with all this talk about snow ahead this week, we want to make sure that your home is ready for whatever might come its way. Yeah, Kevin Cove is here to make sure your home is snow ready. And Kevin, you went over winterizing homes uh, last month, but now we are focusing on the snow. Yes, you know, when we talked about this like a month ago, yeah. we were mostly talking about super cold temps and the mm -hmm. ice and freezing pipes and things like that, right? Mm -hmm. But guys, with everything Nick's talking about, oh, yeah. we got to talk about what to do with the snow, especially with the possible this week. Now is the time to prepare for any snow that may be on the way. All of these tips I got for you are from SDOT. They say that you should have the following things on hand. A snow shovel, a bag of street salt, warm clothes, extra blankets, flashlights, and a first aid kit. When it actually snows, you should clear your sidewalks in front of your home or business every 12 hours. Before snow turns into ice, snow melt and even rain could block storm drains, causing local flooding. If it gets too bad, you can also submit a clogged drain report with the city of Seattle. Now, it rarely happens, but property owners can be fined $250 for not clearing snow from sidewalks, according to Seattle Municipal Code. And guys, I also have this. It's a winter weather preparedness checklist. This is all courtesy of SDOT. I'm not sure if you guys noticed this, but like 75% of this is about what to have in your car. The bottom portion is about your home. So of course, tomorrow morning, we'll go over some of these tips about what you should have in your car during this week. Yeah. Speaking of cars, guys, it's been an absolute mess out there on the roads this morning. I've been tracking major incident after after major incident down tree after down tree so let's get right to it in the real-time traffic center folks this is the big one a fatal crash on SR 900 at Martin Luther King Jr. Way in Skyway this road closure has been sticking around as WSP and we know Puget Sound Fire was investigating this at one point as well no we're telling what when MLK Jr. Way will reopen but you're going to want to avoid that area South King County it is getting rough for you down there Nick was talking about how they may see some serious rainfall at some point in this morning commute and I've been watching some serious congestion build up throughout the morning. North Sound, it's coming for you guys too. From Linwood all the way to Shoreline, you see that congestion. Everett is looking okay, but I got to tell you, as the week goes along and as the weather gets more intense, it'll only get trickier from here. We got to talk about the passes, okay? Because Stevens Pass, Snoqualmie Pass, chains are required on both, oversized vehicles prohibited, white pass, traction tires are required. Here's a look at your drive times right now. Everett to Seattle, 48 minutes 33 minutes over to Renton, 71 minutes Tacoma to Seattle. If you got to go, you already know. Please tune your FM dial over to 97.3 Kyra News Radio because they got all your traffic updates on the road. But Nick, oh boy, I don't even know what you're going to talk about. Oh. You just got too much. Oh, Everything. Wow. Yeah. What's happening? What's that, Lindsay? All that behind you. Oh, I know it. I was worried Very. for a second. Yeah, this is Crystal Mountain. And I put this up because around the, the Crystal Mountain ski area, I just recorded a gust of 83 miles per hour. <laughs> White out conditions for the passes, like Kevin was saying. So do not travel if you do not have to. And even then, maybe try to delay it. It's going to snow like this all day. You're going to see off again, on again showers like that heavy one you're seeing that's going to push in Island County soon. Maybe some isolated thunderstorms with that. But you'll notice when you head out, you you actually have some breaks in between. It will be spotty. It will be on again, off again all day. And it's not like I can say, hey, at one, you're going to have a band of rain. It's not like that. It will just go like this all day. So you got to expect showers off and on all day. By five, you're still seeing snow in the mountains. So I showed you 17 inches at Snoqualmie Pass and told you with the blizzard warning in effect, another one to two feet possible before this is all said and done.
Now by five, you can see a few showers, but what I want you to notice is overnight. I've been talking about this for the past couple days, even Friday, that you could see some pockets of wet snow tomorrow morning. Number one, if you look in Snohomish, King and Pierce counties, the foothills will have a chance tomorrow of at least a dusting if at least some wet snow because the temperatures are not going to fall below freezing overnight. And then at four o'clock in the morning tomorrow, I think Thurston, Mason, Lewis counties, when it's all said and done tomorrow morning could pick up like an inch. Yeah, I said it. And then tomorrow morning through, say, about 7, you even have some pockets where you're seeing some snow or wet snow in Everett, Seattle, and Tacoma. But after the morning commute, it's gone, and we dry out. Next thing, the Fraser River. We always see wind funnel through that, and it gets really strong in Whatcom County. That's going to happen. And I will say that's going to butt up against the existing air mass. So watch from 7 to noon. You see this narrow band of convergence. I think there could be a few otherwise snow showers as well. Mixed stuff. But from noon through, say, about the end of the day, that's your best bet to see anything. After that, this will run out of computer model data. But the next thing is how far north does snow come on Friday? Some computer models push it to, say, Olympia, Chehalis, and give you a lot. Some push it to Everett and give everybody a lot. So we're looking at mid 40s. The strongest wind today starts late morning through about mid afternoon. So you're going to find increasing wind from where you are now. Thunderstorms possible. That mix or some accumulating snow tomorrow morning. You still have that chance in that narrow band Thursday and then potentially widespread snow and really cold Friday, Saturday with a slight warm up on Sunday. <sighs> What did I forget? Is that everything? I think, I that's think everything. you covered it all. Man. Oh, boy. All right. Well, it's 6.52, and CBS Mornings is just ahead at 7. Here's Gail King with a look at what's coming up. Good morning, Seattle. Hey, Niku. Hey, Lindsay. Good to see you, too. Here's what's coming up on your favorite morning show, CBS Mornings. Get ready for some big names and some big personalities. Anthony, as in Mason, talks with Oscar winner Daniel Kaluuya about his newest project. It's called The Kitchen. He co-wrote it, and he's making his directing debut. You go, Daniel. Also, trailblazing model and entrepreneur, that's a lovely Beverly Johnson on your screen, will be here in studio today. 50 years ago, she became the first black person to appear on the cover of Vogue magazine. Look at her. We'll talk about that and her new off-Broadway one-woman show. And if that's not enough, guess who's here today? That's Gronk. He's in the house. Four-time Super Bowl champ Rob Gronkowski has got an exclusive announcement about this year's Super Bowl. We'll see you 7 o'clock straight up. All right, thanks, Gail. 6.53 right now. Let's give you a live look at the numbers on Wall Street right now. Wall Street started the week with some big gains, buoyed by tech gains, and despite that drop in Boeing stock, we've been watching that really closely. So right now, the Dow's down about 274 points. Boeing stock also down about 1.82%, kind of dancing around that area down today. Over the past five days since that section of the plane blew out midair, stock is down over 9%. So we've been watching this really closely. Boeing going to have an employee-wide meeting today about safety based at the Renton plant, employee-wide. So we'll be tracking that and see how the stock does today. 654, we'll be right back. Want to leave works all day so I can keep working my magic. Just want to leave. 12 hours of uninterrupted pain relief. Aleve, who do you take it for? And for fast topical pain relief, try Aleve X. My mom's Alzheimer's never changed how much we love her, but it did change her. She developed agitation that may happen with dementia due to Alzheimer's disease. She started yelling, pacing around, kept repeating 